what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be putting together a pretty powerful small form factor Ryzen powered mini gaming PC and when I do these builds I usually install Windows but for this one we're going to be running Linux on it with the recent release of the Steam Deck I've had a lot of viewers asking me to build something like this just to see what we could do with one of these Ryzen 5000 series APUs I would love to install SteamOS 3.0 on here but as of making this video it's not available to install on a PC like this but we can install Manjaro so that's what we're going to be running here it's based on Arch we do have Steam pre-installed there there's a lot of different things we can do with it and obviously since we're running Linux on this but we want to play a lot of PC games we'll be using Proton in Steam just to see how this whole setup performs and if it would be worth putting something like this together specifically with Linux installed Moving right over to the parts used in this build, as you can see there's not a lot of stuff here and we don't need a lot of stuff because we're going to be utilizing a Ryzen APU. I will leave links to everything used in this build in the description and when it comes to the case I opted for one of my favorites. This is the Nwin Chopin Pro, it's got a 200 watt power supply instead of the 150 with the original version, but it's mini ITX. We've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4400 megahertz a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. The motherboard is an ROG Strix B550 gaming board. And with this one, I bought it refurbished. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the IO plate. Little upset about that, but I got it for a really good deal. And I'm not gonna complain because I can definitely get by without this IO plate right now. I did order one, but it's gonna take a few weeks to get in. So we're gonna build it without it, but we're gonna get a little extra cooling in this in-win case. And we can definitely use it with the APU we're using because when this is overclocked, it can actually pull a lot of wattage, up to 180 watts, because this is the Ryzen 7 5700G. It's based on Zen 3 with 8 cores, 16 threads, and built-in Radeon 8 graphics up to 2000 megahertz. but for this one, we're going to overclock them to 2300 megahertz. And to keep everything cool and make it fit inside of this small form factor case, I'm using the Thermalrite AXP90i with a Noctua fan on top of it. This is one of my favorite little low profile coolers. It's 47 millimeters tall and it's constructed of copper. So this is actually a really simple build. I've got my CPU in place, I've got my SSD in place and my cooler. I'll just throw the RAM in here. When it comes to these Ryzen APUs, the faster the RAM, the better performance you're gonna get out of those integrated graphics. Now in the future, they're gonna be swapping over to DDR5, but right now I went with about as fast as I could without breaking the bank. 4400 megahertz, it's running in dual channel, 16 gigabyte. This board has two M.2 slots. We've got one on the rear and we've got the one on the front where I've placed this 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. So now that I have my motherboard set up, I'm going to go ahead and slide it inside of this NWIN show pan. Remember, this is the pro version with a 200 watt pre-installed power supply. No IO plate was included with this motherboard, so we're going to leave it off for now. Got one on the way, but it does fit in here really nicely without that IO plate. Sometimes it just gets in the way. All that's really left to do is mount the motherboard inside of the case and plug everything in. Try to make it look as nice as possible, but this is a pretty tight case. But with the way Inwin has this case set up, if you tuck these cables properly, it doesn't look too overcrowded. So now what I need to do is go ahead and install Linux on this NVMe SSD. It's a really simple process. I went with the Plasma version of Manjaro. I downloaded it from their website. I flashed it with Etcher to a four gigabyte USB drive. I'm gonna go ahead and boot to that USB drive and we'll do a quick install really easy to set up. It's going to give you a nice little installation walkthrough. We need to choose our location, our keyboard layout, the location we want to install Manjaro. I'm going to erase this M.2 SSD, choose the name for the PC. I'm going to set up a password. And personally, I like to set this up to log in automatically. You can also encrypt the disk if you want to, but for this video here, I'm just going to leave that blank. If you've ever installed any operating system at all, you can definitely get this done. Manjaro has made this really easy to get this set up. So now we're installing to that SSD. Give it a few minutes to finish up. And once it's finished, it'll look something like this. I've just changed the desktop background. All right, first things first, always like to make sure I'm updated here. So we'll go to updates. Just gonna check for updates. If anything's available, you can apply it right here. Next thing I would recommend doing is just going to the search bar and typing in hardware. Hardware configuration. And from here you can see our video device, which just happens to be a Radeon Vega 8. 
If you install the latest version of Manjaro, it's pretty up to date, but sometimes you might want to auto install open source driver. Uh, if you're running into issues, I would recommend doing this. Test it out first, but I'm going to go ahead and install this. And as you can see, I'm already up to date. It just skipped it. So we're good to go on the GPU driver. Manjaro does come pre-installed with Steam. So if we head down here to games, you can see we have Steam. It'll automatically create a desktop shortcut for us. Log us in. And if we go down our list here, let's say we wanted to install uh, Elden Ring. This is going to be grayed out. That's because we don't have Proton enabled. This is actually only built for Windows, but we can use Proton. So we're going to go to Steam, Settings, Steam Play, and from here, enable Steam Play for all other titles. So you can use Proton Experimental, which I've actually been doing. I personally prefer using this, or you could pick one from the list. And if you head over to the Proton database, I'll leave a link in the description. Some games do work better with different versions, so it's really up to you and the game you want to play. But I'm going to go with Experimental. I've enabled it for all of the games. Choose OK. Steam has to restart. And once Steam restarts, let's go back to Elden Ring. We can now install it. So I'm going to go ahead and install a bunch of games because that's really what this is about. I want to see how this performs with PC gaming and this APU. While I'm waiting for some Steam games to download, I figured we'd test out a little bit of emulation. And first up here, we have PS3 using RPCS3. One thing a lot of people might be noticing since I'm running Linux here is the graph on the left hand side. This is giving me basically all the information I need and it definitely looks very similar to the one on the Steam Deck. This is known as Mango HUD. I've got it installed. I actually just built it, but there is an AUR for it. And you can enable installing AURs really easily in Manjaro but we're getting really good performance here. I'm sitting at 1080p, and uh, with this, I haven't overclocked the CPU. We just went to 2300 megahertz on the GPU side of things. If I take this up a bit, we're gonna get a lot more heat, especially when playing something like this, because it does use a lot of cores and threads. And as you can see, we're already about 85 to 86 degrees Celsius here. But uh, running this at about 4.4 gigahertz with a better cooler, will definitely increase performance with RPCS3, but in my opinion, this is definitely playable, and we're running at 60, as you can see down there in Mango HUD. Not bad, and given that we're running at 1080p, it does look a lot better than the 720p stock resolution. So PS3 is really great with this setup here. There's still some games that aren't gonna work very well, like God of War. Let's move over there now. I'll just show you exactly what's going on. But uh, when it comes down to it, this performance does have a lot to do with the game's compatibility and RPCS3. With a much more powerful system, I've actually been able to get this to run pretty decently, but I've never really been able to get a stable 60, especially in this beginning part here. There's just a lot going on. In the future, this will definitely work a lot better on lower end systems, but even if you go over to their website and check the compatibility of this game, it just says in game and not playable. Now that my games are finished downloading, I can finally start testing here, and first up we have Cyberpunk 2077. I'm actually impressed by the performance, it's definitely not perfect. We're at 720p, low settings, but this is working really well for an APU. I did turn VSync on with this one because there was so much screen tearing, and it's really trying its hardest, but unfortunately we do get those dips even down into the 30s. And this is the third time I had to restart the game because it kept crashing. just like this. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3, 720p, low settings, and I actually got an average of 64 FPS. You'll see it go much higher than that in some spots, but 64 on average isn't bad, and with VSync on, this can definitely be played on this APU at 60 FPS, 720p low. Another one I wanted to try was Project Cars 2. Unfortunately, I don't own Forza on Steam. I only have it with uh, the Xbox and Game Pass. We're at 720p with a low medium mix, and I got an average of 65 FPS out of this one. It's really not that bad. And again, VSync is your friend when it comes to these APUs. It will help out with all of that screen tearing, but I wouldn't mind playing this game at 60 the way it looks right now. 
Here we have God of War, original settings, 720p, no fidelity FX on right now. We're going to try it in a second. But with the settings I have right now, I got an average of 35 FPS. It would be really nice to get a higher frame rate, but, you know, we're working with an APU right now. Uh, they've done a great job porting this over to PC, and the Proton version actually works way better than I ever thought it would. But I still think we can get a little more out of this game by turning Fidelity FX on. So if we go to Performance from the settings, right now our screen resolution is 720p with no scaling at all. This is basically going to take that resolution down for us. It's kind of like resolution scale. But at performance, when I go back into the game, we're getting much better performance here, and it's so close to sticking at 60. But since we're not sticking at 60, we got a lot of screen tearing going on. So I just turned V-Sync on to see what we could do. I was really hoping that we could get a constant 60 out of this. Original settings, 720p, Fidelity FX set to performance. And the final game I wanted to test here was Elden Ring. It's really funny because this actually feels just like it's running on the Steam Deck. This is about the same performance I get there. I average around 38 to 41 on the Steam Deck, and that's really what we have over here. But on this, we've got 18 cores, 16 threads, and that older Vega 8i GPU is overclocked to 2300 megahertz. Remember, we're still running DDR4 here. The Steam Deck has DDR5 and the new RDNA 2i GPU. So overall, when running Linux on the 5700G and playing our games through Steam with Proton, I'm not seeing much of a difference in performance versus Windows 10 or Windows 11 with the 5700G. They're really not that far off from each other, but in Windows I do get a little better frame rate in each of these by 3 to 4 frames, which really isn't much at all. It's something you'd probably never notice. But it's still a little early for gaming on Linux. I mean, this is really going to blow up since the Steam Deck was released. And as soon as SteamOS 3.0 is officially released and we can install it on different PCs, there's going to be a ton of optimizations for all of these games. But now that I've run these games in Linux, I will test them in Windows. And I'll create a short video just giving you a comparison. If you're interested in it, let me know in the comments below. But I don't see a reason why you shouldn't install Linux on a mini PC like this. I mean, unless you absolutely have to have Windows for certain applications. And something like Game Pass is really important to some people. So in the end, it's really up to you. But I had a few people asking about this video, so I figured I'd go ahead and create it. If there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC in Linux, just let me know in the comments below. And like I mentioned, if you're interested in building something like this, whether you install Windows or Linux on it, I'll leave links to all the parts used in this build in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.